All around the world, many big tech CEOs are claiming that coding is dead, that AI is taking over and replacing mid and junior level engineers. And to take it another step further, there's some CEOs, Zuckerberg, who are claiming that in 2025, AI is fully taking over and flat out replacing engineers. And from these high, almighty powerful CEOs, the message seems clear. Don't learn to code. Don't try. Don't start. Why bother? Just become a really good prompt engineer, use something like V0, and you are well on your way from producing large scale, full stack web apps. And now enter in our hero, GitHub CEO, Thomas Domke. And I probably butchered that name, but holy shit, is his latest take honestly a breath of fresh air. You see Thomas with emphasis says, I strongly believe that every kid, every child should learn coding. We should actually teach them coding in school in the same way we teach them physics and geography. So in a world of chaos and a world of AI, who's right? What's your take and what should you believe? And in today's video, we're gonna dive into my three perspectives, watching Thomas's interview and what we should be taking away from all of the AI hype. Take number one is to break out of read only mode. You see Thomas's take here is that it is crucial as human beings that we not only can see and use the tools out there, but we have a fundamental understanding of what's happening under the hood and how they're working. We understand what it takes to design some of these tools. And think about it. I use many different tools in my day to day, whether it be for YouTube, my nine to five, my side projects, whatever it may be. I'm using tons and tons of different tools. And I love the fact that as an engineer, I know how they work under the hood. But then I go and talk to my wife who is not an engineer. And she's like, I have no freaking clue what the hell you're talking about. This is rocket science. You're hurting my brain. Please stop talking to me. And with an AI powered world, I think this is where we need to start training our youth and shifting the generational pull of how we see and view tech. Don't become a bystander of just using the tool. Actually gain some clarity and gain an understanding. Use AI to explain it to you so that you actually know what is happening under the hood. And I think this is really important especially as engineers coming up in the field, I believe that you all are suffering the most from this AI burst. More and more junior and mid-level engineers are getting replaced by some of these CEOs who think that AI is just going to outbuild those developers. And I'm of the personal belief that if you have a more fundamental understanding of what is happening under the hood, not just of AI, but all of the tools and services that you're using, you're just going to boost your resume stand out from the crowd and have a much better opportunity leveraging those tools, using the AI with more engineered prompts, using the AI to get better output. And I believe that this is going to help speed run all of the tools that you're using, but also outside in your personal life too. And I think if you're on the fence and you've never built a product outside of work, this is your time. The time has never been better than now. So start small, build something that you're using in your personal life, have fun, go use AI, break shit, and learn. And that is the cycle that I believe is going to keep promoting you further and further in your growth. I kind of already alluded to it, but the second point here is to use AI as your superhero, your assistant, your coding buddy, whatever the hell you want to call it. I have made many videos on this channel where I am bashing the hell out of all of the AI craziness that we're seeing. Don't even get me started on vibe coding. And if you haven't seen that video, click the card right here. Whether you're a product person, a senior engineer, a junior engineer, no matter who you are, I'm a firm believer that you should be using AI, but you should be using it intelligently. And I think Thomas here is on the same brainwave. He totally acknowledges that AI is speeding things up. Obviously they're using Copilot in GitHub to build Copilot. And I think the speed and efficiencies we can gain is exactly where these tools should be used. It should be used for your journey alongside your coding, not as a full replacement, but as an aid to help you code more efficiently, to help you learn better, to help find the gaps in your solutions, and ultimately be your rubber duck. I remember, I don't know, five, six, seven years ago, walking to somebody's office, chit-chatting back and forth, just because I needed to talk through whatever design or challenge or problem I was having. And I don't have to do that now. I can open Copilot, give it a little explain session. I can talk to Claude, which is currently my favorite LLM, and I could work through it myself. The beauty is that I can use this as my assistant and still write the code myself. Maybe I take some snippets here and there from the generated output, but I don't have to blind copy and paste it. And I think Thomas feels the exact same way. Use it as a tool, learn from it, help aid your growth, but don't use it as a crutch. And I think the biggest takeaway here is to focus on what AI can't do. 
or at least can't do yet. I think Thomas is pretty clear about this. We need engineers to do the engineering stuff. They need to exercise their craft and apply systems thinking and design and build really great applications. Look, for the exact same reason I hate vibe coding, Thomas nails this one on the head. Systems are damn complex. Many, many decisions, architecture decisions, design decisions, what software engineer is working, what part of that, all of these different decisions go into building that beautiful tool or beautiful product that you're just using as a user. And I'm still firmly in the camp that AI is not there, at least yet, to handle all of those different decisions that you need to make along the way of building these complex projects. And if you don't believe me, go and try it. Go start vibe coding right now, starting new projects, start with V0, start with Claude, whatever you want, go in cursor, I don't care. Try to build something where you do nothing but provide prompts and see how far you get. Allow it to make the architecture decisions, allow it to spin up the software, allow it to design the user interface and help you find the target audience. Allow it to do everything and see how far you get. I don't think you're gonna get very far. And if you do, come back and drop a link to it down in this video because I'd love to see what you created. But I'm of the personal believer that it's not there yet. So as you learn to code, you need to understand the why behind different approaches. Why choose one database over the other? Why structure your code in a certain way? And I think those high level engineering skills will continue to keep us as human beings, as developers above AI. And I think it's going to allow us to stay in the loop far longer than the basic coding skills that some of these LLMs are outputting. Thomas's perspective reminds us that understanding the fundamentals of how the digital world works is not just about employment. It is about literacy in the 21st century. And after someone with over 30 years in the field, I trust his opinion. And his opinion was you gotta keep rehearsing. You have to keep practicing. And you're never done with learning. And I'm a personal believer as someone who has been in this game for a long time before AI, and as somebody who is using AI now, if you fail to continue to practice, if you fail to learn, if you fail to adapt, you will be replaced. But if you continue working at your craft, grinding day in and day out in a healthy, sustainable way, you will stay relevant regardless of what AI can do. So what do you think? Is coding still worth learning? Should we all become prompt engineers? Where do you land on this spectrum? Do you think we need both? Drop a comment down below. We'd love to chat about it. And with that, I will see you all next week. Peace.